everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Wealth Preservation Podcast. We are excited um, to talk about real estate today. We have an awesome guest today, Mr. Eli Weiner. Eli, how are you doing today? Fantastic. Good. We're excited to have you here. Co-host today, as always, is my trusted sidekick and good friend, Mark Scyther. Mark, how are you doing today? Good. Uh, I am excited about this episode. I think this is one of the... Um, this might be one of the most listened to podcasts of 2020, I think. So, and you're, you're pretty good at that stuff. So I'm going to yep. guess, I'm going to say yes on that one. <laughs> no, um, you know, the wealth preservation podcast is really designed for business owners and the advisors that serve them. And we're always trying to bring uh, unique strategies and, uh, you know, basically ways to advise uh, those business owners and their, and those advisors to um, just do better business, to maybe save on taxes, um, to get better return on investment, or just learn something new that they haven't seen before. Um, so this one is real estate. I know real estate's kind of a, a hot topic right now. We're excited to kind of to bring this around. Um, and I think everybody's going to really enjoy that. So uh, we'll just go ahead and start from there. Eli, welcome. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me. Yeah, we're excited to have you here. So let's let's kind of just start with your background. I was on the first mm-hmm. episode when we interview uh, a new guest. We always kind of like to get their background and kind of their story. And we were, we've kind of been talking and joking um, before the episode started. So we're excited to kind of hear your story. So you, yeah, where, now, where that you you've, now that you've kind of gotten a preview of my story, I yeah. don't know which is a, what part's appropriate or not. Oh, the whole thing is appropriate. <laughs> we're, we're, oh, there's some good parts that we're going to unpack in there. There's some, we're, we'll, we'll get to it in a minute. <laughs> but let's start. You were born in awesome Auburn, right? So yeah. that's, where you, that's where it starts. Let's start, let's start from Auburn. Yeah, born in Auburn. You know, we touched on my, my first uh, entrepreneurial uh, journey at uh, – Going, taking the hour bus ride to Forest Lake Christian School and going to the gas station and um, he was know. he was a noun later and mamba dealer back back in the day. <laughs> so if you know for those of you who want to look up what a mamba was, they were delicious. By the way, <laughs> eight year old Josh thought they were really good. But so Eli yeah. was a mamba any, dealer. Any candy yeah. I could break down into pieces and sell for a profit. Yes, uh, you know get the get the other kids uh, <laughs> lunch money before they got to school. Yes, to spend it there. Yeah. Smart. It worked Smart. Out Which good. that could have gone two different directions, working yeah. with people's uh, uh, addictions and cravings. Right. I mean, I'm glad you ended up in the real estate business. Yeah, we, yeah. yeah <laughs> we may be we may be interviewing you behind a, a wall, a wall. <laughs> if, if it went the other direction. So you started selling candy at an early age. Yeah, anything I could do. Actually, my mom was a caterer too, okay. so she would have these parties at her house, and she would cater them, and people would come over, uh, and I'd sit out there with a bucket. Uh, and wash rags and stuff and offer to wash their car for five bucks and <laughs> you know it. anything I could do yeah. and then I, I mentioned to you at that uh, rally uh, at that shopping center there yeah. I used to climb up the trees and get the um, get the mistletoe, mistletoe and wrap them with bow and and I'd go sit there with my brother in front of the grocery store and, and um, uh, make a pretty good profit selling mistletoe there. yeah I don't know if they'll let you do that so, it's some, like a, some store manager is like that's where all of our plans were going <laughs> yeah <laughs> So, so the entrepreneurial thing was kind of, a, you know, started in an early age, right? So who kind of developed that? Was that your mom or your dad or the combo of them or just, or is it just well, because you they, like, you like to have money in your pocket? They didn't give us anything. Right. So yeah. if we wanted anything, you know, we had to, yeah. uh, and, and, and it was, it wasn't just, um, you know, they had money, but even if we wanted, uh, we, uh, you know, my brother and I were big tennis players, Yeah. but, and you'd snap your strings all the time. So if yeah. we wanted a, uh, buy our own stringer so we could start stringing other people's rackets yeah. and uh, pay for our own string and pay, pay for rackets. I mean, it's kind of an expensive is, sport to right. play. Yeah. Uh, even tennis lessons. Uh, so we wanted anything. We, we had to figure out how to, how get to it. get it. Right. So even, even some of my best tennis coaches, uh, I used to trade. Uh, I, w- I would work for them in exchange for them to give me lessons. Gotcha. Yeah. So it was just, um, I, I guess I didn't think that much of it, just right. that, it, I had to do it. Right. If yeah. I didn't do it, I wouldn't have out of necessity. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't have any money, and then yeah, yeah, I like it. that's awesome. Uh, yeah, and, and that is kind of how the world works. Yeah, a lot of kids don't learn that until they get out of college. It, so, it doesn't yeah. work for all. The, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Okay, so you're so you're slinging mistletoe in front of Albertsons off uh, 49 and Forest Hill exit in Auburn, and then um, and playing tennis, and then you said you moved to South. Yeah. Um, the parents separated. Okay. We, uh, we moved to Roseville. Um, my first two years of high school, I was at Oakmont. Okay. My last two years, uh, my mom moved to, um, uh, to Morro Bay. So right. last two years at, at Morro Bay. Not we a terrible from, place, by the way. No, it was great. Yeah. 
uh, foggy a lot, but <laughs> yes, we went from 3,000 kids to 900 kids at that school. My grades went from like D's to B's. I didn't do anything different. <laughs> Best move ever. Yeah, yeah. it was, job, it was good. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that the teachers there were stoned because <laughs> the, the school is actually on uh, – it's on, it's, it's on uh, the ocean. So, you know, at lunchtime, you could just go out there and go surfing. It was, it yeah. was a really cool location. So, um, and then from there, I went to Foothill College, junior college in, um, in uh, Los, Los Altos. Okay. And I had a cousin who was a Stanford wrestler. So I lived with all these Stanford wrestlers and we had a blast, but because I was at the junior college, I threw all the parties for the Stanford wrestlers and they did all my work at yes. the, at the school. So, um, Anyway, now that was grades go from B's to B pluses and A minuses. Yeah, and, yeah, no, you know, I had. You're like, I'm I had, not changing my work at all. I had good enough grades to eventually get into Davis. Okay. Uh, thanks to those guys. Yeah. Um, well, you're talking about delegation earlier, so I, you you delegate. You know, it was smart. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, there was some trading and some yeah. delegation, and right. and uh, but yeah, a lot of these guys. I had I had uh, I had this one guy who was a double major at Stanford. He was um, and. Uh, he was an engineer, but his passion was um, English. Okay. So he wrote this beautiful essay for me. Yeah. And <laughs> it's uh, and and then I think he got like a B plus. Yeah. And the guy freaked out. He wanted to call the teacher. He wanted to, you know. I'm like, no, yeah. you can't do you that. You're like, that's good. B plus, <laughs> man. That's good stuff right there. I've only seen this a yeah, couple times. A couple yeah. times. I didn't know they made that. <laughs> I was, I thought it was a myth. no. But we had fun. You know, we'd go on these rock climbing. Um, trips up up in the Santa Cruz mountains and I'd bring a tape recorder and we just um and these guys were so smart and they could just you know pour out this inf they had, they yeah. could just retain information and they would just pour out this information in my recorder I'd say hey I got an essay due tomorrow on this stuff yeah. boom 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 and they'd just yeah. we'd be hiking or whatever they'd be <laughs> like and then I'd take it to uh another fr friend and then they'd type it yep. up and then yeah. Anyway, it got done. The work got done. Yeah. I don't know if you ever seen the movie Back to School with Rodney Dangerfield. Oh yeah, absolutely. She's oh, in there yeah. typing all his stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And then yeah. he's he's yelling at the the um, the guy that wrote the book wrote the, a bad essay for him. Right. Anyway. Yeah. It's, yeah. I get no respect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But these are you know it, it uh, so that's I always knew the, I, that's when he does the triple Lindy. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. That's a that's most dangerous dive out there. <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> I've got off on the danger field. Anyways, yeah. but these are, um, you know, these are all business things, right? That you have to be good to be yeah. good at business. So, um, anyway, great, uh, great tennis program there. Uh, I was able to get into UC Davis. I was going to Davis, and um, now I'm in in these classrooms with 300 kids. Yeah. First time I opened up a textbook, and you know, I'm. Uh, I, I read a lot of biographies, autobiographies, right. study a lot of the, you know, smartest business people out there, you know, how, how, how are they being successful, these type sure. of things. Um, but I couldn't open up a, a tech, I couldn't read a textbook. Right. So, you know, there's just no, there was no story. Right. Yeah. So I, I was struggling at Davis big time. Yeah. And. Um, I would have struggled at Davis big time too, so I'm not really calling. Yeah, it was like a yeah. real school. Yeah. With people studying all the time and in a library. The library. Yeah, they're, they're a library. I, I remember going to the library the first time in college and being like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Like I had to call a, someone. I'm like, what do you do here? That is a lot of books. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Why is everyone so quiet? Why, yeah. Quiet. Yeah. We're having a party at my house later with the wrestlers. I don't think you guys want to come over. I got some mambas. I got some mambas. <laughs> now and later. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that'll probably get cut, but yeah. whatever. Yeah, <laughs> no. I hope not. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so you're at so you're at Davis and struggling, and you're like, "What am I doing here?" Basically, so I, I was, I was, yeah, I was, I was running out of money. Um, I was supposed to have a deal actually on the um, um, a scholarship deal. Okay. But that the summer after I'd already gotten in, that that summer I broke my ankle. Okay. So now I was struggling. But the logic in me was like, okay, well, I'm not going to go pro. I'm not going to, um, uh, you know, it got me into a good school. Let's figure right. out what I'm doing next. Yeah. Well, the problem is when I thought about what am I doing next, that led me to, um, to not 
not continuing school. Right. Yeah. So I was running out of money. Uh, I got a job at Denny's. So Wait, we're gonna, we're gonna dive into that real quick. So you're yeah. so you're going to Davis and you're working at Denny's. Had right? you had I, you dropped out and then started there working was at Denny's? A, the, the Denny's was close to the apartments I lived because I yeah. lived in South Davis. Okay. And there was a cute girl there. <laughs> okay. All right. Full disclosure. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah. So I I I knew another guy that worked there. Got an interview, and this gal that interviewed me, um, I just did such a bad job at the interview, and I don't know if she was desperate or, or what, but she just looked at me, and she's like, are you okay? <laughs> like, I think she was doing some sort of, like, social, you know, justice yeah. deal to, like, give me this job. Yeah. You get a job and a moon's over my hand, baby. <laughs> it's all going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, it was weird. It was weird uh, interviewing at, 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 uh, with this lady in, in the back room in Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, she was, um, so I get the job first month. I'm bus boy. Right. Second month I'm get promoted to server pretty big, big time. time. Yeah. Pretty big time at that point. I yeah. mean, you, you could work, you could work like 12 straight hours and you could make a hundred dollars in tips. Yeah. I mean, I think about now when I go to these restaurants and, yeah. you know, it's just like me and the family and yeah. the tips that, yeah, like, Man, I worked really hard, hard for those right. tips. Yeah, but well, Denny's uh, is not known for the high tipping standards of the clientele. <laughs> it's just not, you know, it's. I, I didn't do my research. Yeah, you just, yeah. <laughs> you should have been eating at the steak. You should have been serving at the steakhouse. What was the steakhouse in Davis? The nice one. That's where you should have. Yeah. Don't they know. don't let me in the places like <laughs> that. True. They just never did. Yeah. So uh, third month, I was promoted to night manager. Yes. So did you put that on a resume of like? I was the fastest, fastest night manager ever. You know, at a, fastest at Denny's. track on, at the Denny's corporate office. That the, they've the, seen. the funny thing is, someone asked me if I've ever had a real job or had to work for any, and that was the only time. So after that, <laughs> I never had to prepare a, a resume. Yeah. Oh. So that's a good thing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now they'd be like, uh, so we see that you worked at Denny's. Uh, Anything else? Yeah, yeah. Well, it was a pretty big deal at Denny. Yeah. yeah. Night I was, manager. I was night manager? Yeah. I mean, you show up at 2 a.m., I'm there. Yeah. I, I I had a Spanish class. It was like 7, 8 a.m. or something. And I would ride my bike I would uh, from the Denny's. And I was half asleep, like like yeah. riding my bike right. over the freeway. Super dangerous. Yeah. And then I would just fall asleep in the class. Yeah. And I and the teacher knew. Um that, that I was working all night. Yeah. And I think she felt bad for me. And she just like let me sleep in her class. <laughs> Did you pass the class? I don't know. I, I don't know if I passed. I mean, I, can't, I don't. I, if, if you judge, uh, you know, by the Spanish I speak, yeah. probably not. <laughs> yeah. Probably not as but, as uh, you know, I, I could do a little salsa dancing yeah. back then. Okay. That, I know that helps. Help. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, hit some moves. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so you're, so you're, you're, you're night manager at Denny's. Like you're on the upward trajectory, yeah, the upward you know, path. Third month, I had to take a look at myself and say, <laughs> okay, I got to do something else. So I told my dad, and I'd always worked for my father off and on uh, yeah. whenever I, I needed money. Um, and he had gotten into, so years ago, he was in the timber business. Okay. And then he accumulated the land, the timber paid for the land, and then he would subdivide the land to help um, – uh, to help sell the land. Yeah. And then he would go buy 10 manufactured homes at a time, put on the land, and that would help uh, also sell the land. Mm -hmm. So then, he's, then he said, okay, well, what if I buy a dealership? Yeah. Then I'll get the homes for cheaper. So he bought a dealership. It's like a manufactured home dealership. Yeah. Home dealership. Yeah, it's like okay. a car dealership, but with yeah. home, you walk around, yeah. there's a bunch of homes there. Um, and what it turned out to be really good for him because a lot of people that walked on the dealership – they um they didn't have land. Gotcha. So he would sell them land home packages, gotcha. and that helped you know sell a lot of his land. So he was learning the business while I was in college. Yeah. And um, so I, I told him we we're in the uh, car driving somewhere, and I told him I was working at Denny's, and he just like he like laughed at me. So I'm like, oh, thanks, Dad. That's, yeah, that's very nice. It's a very sweet father son moment right <laughs> so, there. So, yeah, I'm running subtle. out of money. Yeah, yeah. I'm working at Denny's, and you know, I'm glad you think this is funny. <laughs> yeah. Dad, basically, I'm at, yeah, I'm I wish at I had my bucket right Can now. I wash yeah. your car. <laughs> yeah. you, know. you need some mistletoe, <laughs> mambas, anything. <laughs> so, um, 
there was a park, that it, a mobile home park that reached out to him in, in Davis. Mm -hmm. And he, he said, uh, uh, he said, well, let's go check out this park. They want us to bring homes in to start selling homes. So we went over and checked it out. And uh, so that I could start making extra money by selling mobile homes in mobile home parks. We go in there, meet with the managers, take a look at the park. They got a bunch of vacancy in a market that should have no vacancy. Uh, Davis has always been a, a strong market, especially now. So we, um, uh, we look at this home that they bought and they brought in about a year ago, brand new home, but they haven't sold it for a year. It's the, totally the wrong color. It's like pink on the inside, pink on the outside. It's a, you know, it's three bedroom, single wide. So my dad says, I'm not bringing homes in here to, for you to sell homes because they can't even sell this, this one. one. Right, so yeah. you figure out how to sell this one, then we'll talk. Yeah. And um, he, he was never a, a teacher. You know, yeah. he wasn't, he didn't have the patience. Uh, so I would sit there at the desk of a lot of uh, the guys that worked for him. And these were old school real estate guys. And uh, they would tell me how, teach me how to, to, to advertise right so i put an ad in the paper well, in facebook the, right it was that yeah 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 <laughs> we, we did insta face insta back then insta face and linked out and all that kind of stuff yeah yeah so i i whatever the davis paper was placed an ad uh under apartments for rent and i said why rent when you can buy from this much down this much a month and my phone blew up and uh, i had the home sold in two weeks did you invent that saying because i still get that pitch all the time yeah <laughs> My real estate buddy's like, why rent when you can buy? So yeah, yeah, may maybe you were the. I'm not. Well, I think yeah. we addressed that. I'm not that it. old. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So so you sold the house. You sold the mobile sold the house. Yeah. Uh, worked out a deal with my dad. Went around to all the. Uh, I lived in this uh, apartment next to Denny's in South Davis. I printed out these little flyers that said, "Why rent? Why rent when you can <laughs> buy from yeah. this much down?" Yeah. This much down, this much a month. Copyright. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just taped them to everyone's door. Yeah. Um, the manager at that place, by the way, was kind of a weird dude. So he was like upset with me, but he also liked to come over and party with us at the same time. So, <laughs> so I, I, I didn't. Mad at I you? totally got away with it yeah. because of that. Pick a camp. Get, camp yeah. 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 Half your man. <laughs> like here, man. Have a beer. And he's like, <laughs> okay, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah, he, he definitely had a drinking problem yeah. for sure. <laughs> they 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 probably got him at a discount. Yeah, he's probably <laughs> rent plus twenty bucks or something. Yeah. So just from those flyers from from people in the same uh, uh, apartment complex, yeah. we I sold between that and advertising in the in the paper, yeah. I sold like ten, eleven homes just over that first summer. Yeah. Um Unfortunately, I, my father was still learning the business and he told me how much, how to price the homes, how much everything would cost, all this stuff. And he wasn't set up for the type of volume we were going to do. Yeah. Uh, so when we thought we were making $10,000 a home, we were only making $5,000 a home. Um, when we, uh, you know, the, I, I went to the, the Chevy dealer, bought a truck. Uh, figured out how to set the homes up myself. Right. I was crawling current at the homes, putting the doing the plumbing, plumbing doing yeah. the, you know, just the tape and texture, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. The first house that I moved someone in uh, after the pink house, um, I did a really like I, I did a terrible job. I didn't know uh, what the standard was, and and uh, you know that these people it was the first home they bought, and they 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 basically sat they sat me down and said, uh, Eli, you know. This is the first house we bought. I, um, you know, there was no light bulbs. You know, there was no. Um, go, those are extra. Yeah, but I didn't know. I didn't. Know. I was just selling homes. Yeah. I didn't know. You know, am I supposed to put light bulbs in there when they come in? Yeah. 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 Right. There's yeah. a standard. You yeah. need to make it. You need to make this a nice. This is a yeah. big purchase for someone. It. It should be. Sure. There's an I iconic. I was. I was. Like, unlock the door. Flip on the lights, and it's like, and eh, no power. <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah, it was, it was totally wrong. Yeah. yeah. And, um, it was super embarrassing. I was, you know, felt horrible. Yeah. And I re remember that ever since. But, uh, so, um, yeah, from then on it was, you know, we got to do a better job. We got to make sure that every little details handled yeah. and, you know, we've got a system for that. And, um, but you know, it's, that was, uh, that was kind of getting, thrown in the, in the deep end and just yeah. learning it. So I, I had to learn the sales, the construction, the finance side. Um, 
you know, every, everything about it. And eventually there was, uh, I wasn't able to work out. Uh, we dr dropped out of school. Yeah. I was making good money, dropped yeah. out of Davis, um, moved to the Bay Area because I had a relationship with those those regional managers. Okay. Yeah, they hooked the... me up with a few spaces in the Bay Area. So that business was a different model. Okay. It was more like flipping homes because we'd go in and um, and we'd buy it, we'd buy a space for forty thousand yeah. dollars. That would give us the rights to the space. We'd have the storage agreement. And then we'd buy a brand new home for, for, from the factories at forty thousand okay. dollars. And um, and then we'd spend twenty thousand setting it up and we'd sell it for hundred and fifty. Yeah. And we were flipping these homes. And so what you'd be was all in at like a hundred grand and you're gotcha and you're making Yeah. 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 Very low overhead, but very capital you're intensive. And you're how old at this point? You're what? Twenty two. Twenty two, twenty three. Yeah. 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 Making fifty fifty grand a flip. Yeah. And, and you know, because now we've made a, a definitive shift from like, hey, I'm going to college, now I'm gonna do this. I, I mean, in that transition, was there anyone who was like like college is a sure thing where you're going to be successful and you're going to get, get a degree like why are you chasing this dream or or was it just kind of you know you're not really you okay. know my father's story was was he took a loan for law school mm -hmm. and invested that in real estate and i had an uncle who's a, a pretty successful attorney around here and and i met with him and and you know uh told him i was thinking of dropping out and and um even though he was a successful lawyer he said look at if you're going to real estate just do that yeah, mm -hmm. you know, don't mess around. And so I, I do want to take a second. Let's, I mean, since we're here, I was like, I, I want to talk about because it is kind of a hot topic right now, on, or it has been for a while. Of it, you know, with the ballooning cost of you know higher education, college, master's degrees, doctorates, and that kind of stuff. That even becoming an attorney, that people are spending these exorbitant amounts of money. And you know, I mean, it's, it's college really worth it. I mean, what's kind of your what's kind of your take on that? If you're not going there, for, if you don't have a specific passion and yeah. know what that passion is, yeah. Then um, it doesn't make any sense to me, right? Yeah, um, I think it's it's tough because it's a it's probably like a good safe place for people to kind of grow up. Sure. Yeah. But it's a pretty expensive place for people Very, to grow yeah. up too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I totally, so then, I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. At some point, I think we're gonna start really feeling the aftermath of people just not being able to afford stuff because student debt is just taking every last bit of their paycheck. I mean, right. It's, you know, we we see that. All the time on on uh, you know some of the four k participants we deal with where they're just like I'd love to buy a house I'd love to get into real estate I'd love to get some passive income I've got a fifty thousand dollar loan I got to pay off right you know I, I think I think going to a junior college I don't know if you can call it that you call it a community college now but um, I think that's a good option mm -hmm. right but, but now you can learn so much stuff yeah uh, just from YouTube yeah I mean I've I've got a twelve year old daughter Isadora that's she can do all these crafts and stuff that she does from watching YouTube. It's right. It's insane yeah. what right. what she's teaches herself. It's, yeah. No. I, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm kind of my personal. I think the face of education is changing because there's so much. There's so many ways that you can go basically self educate. Um, you know, I, I think self educating. You know, reading a ton. I encourage you know my kids like we talked about before the show. I was encouraging my kids to read a ton. Um, just read, 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 because that kind of gives you that love of knowledge, and that, and then you'll you can go kind of self educate and teach yourself how to do things. I, I think if they spent time understanding a balance sheet, understanding P and Ls, right? You know, if, if everyone went out and got a uh, like, if your prerequisite was an accounting degree, yeah, right, and then you could kind of do whatever, whatever you, want. you want, yeah, no, absolutely, and whatever yeah. you did, what you'd end up better at it, right? Yeah, no, I think I mean because you know with some of the small business owners we work with, I mean the hardest thing for them is they're they're finances are usually a mess not that they're not making money they're just their books are a mess what's just, the return yeah because there's no, yeah. right yeah am i making it's money really or not? tough it's hard it's, yeah I, I mean if yeah until it, they want to go sell something if or, someone said well, okay well should, uh you get this half a million dollars you're going to spend or three hundred thousand dollars you're going to spend on call i don't even know how much it is now yeah but or we could just plug that into a mobile home park or right yeah i, I don't know what makes it, it it's yeah. it's really tough for me to because you can get all that stuff, all the other stuff you can get for free. Right. Yeah. Yeah. With some hard work. Yeah. Sure. Yep. So it's. Right. Yeah. I. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a tough one. I think. I mean. I think the future. You know. You know. My kids and and probably your kids are going to have to grapple with that a little bit and kind of figure out. You know how they can educate themselves and do I need this piece of paper anymore that says I took some English classes and some classes that didn't really matter. Right. I think a bigger challenge is. Um, you know how how just not to screw our kids up, right? Yeah. Because the more successful we are, 
right. the more of a challenge it is not to really just make them completely useless. Right. Yeah. You know? No, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, we'll make sure that we we cut that part and give it to them on their 18th birthday. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, your dad wants to make sure you're not completely My, son, no, but, but my kids know. Yeah. I, I, I'm very, you I know. I want you to be useless. <laughs> no, but you're totally, you're totally correct because yeah. most generational wealth is gone by the third generation. So if there's a very successful well, and that's family the, member by the third generation, it's usually That's back. the it's myth, gone. right? But, but, because they, they think that that uh, it, the, they got to tax the wealthy people so that it doesn't stay in their hands. But the truth is they, that our kids and the grandkids and the, the next generation is so good at spending it. Yes. It'll get out in the economy way better than way if you give it to the government. government. Yeah. Right. Yes. By the way, you, did you guys hear that? Uh, they're at the state assembly and legislature. They're going to spend it. Don't worry. You don't need to do the inheritance yeah. tax. They'll get it out there. Yeah. Anyways. One way or <laughs> Yeah, so I, I it, that college thing is really interesting because you know I've I've had too much college and you know I'm sitting here interviewing you, um, but you know does it really matter though? You know does it? I have I've not made it that we haven't made it that far. Uh, I mean you know it's it's a little further down the script, but we're gonna. Bring I it forgot up. to look at your resume before I let you interview. Oh, yeah. yeah, you you made it on you know the top forty <laughs> under forty. Yeah, I mean. I still have a shot at doing that if I start working really hard now. <laughs> but I mean, you missed your. You oh, I way missed it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like maybe top. 70 under 70. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Hey, you can always hope. Yeah. yeah. Bigger well, the, less by then. The trick to that is just play golf with the guy that does the, you know. The list, right. Yeah. yeah. What, what's yeah. his name? You can tell me after. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and now I need to take golf lessons because I'm right. terrible. <laughs> uh, okay. So let's kind of, you know, so you're, uh, you know, so you're down in the Bay Area uh, flipping homes. You're 22, making $50,000 a pop. So... You're like, yeah, I'm not going back to college. And, and I mean, also, at what point did you say, hey, this is no longer like my, my side gig, but you wanted to create like a corporate structure and, and actually turn it into a business versus like your Well, summer. it was before I moved to the Bay. Okay. And, and it was, you know, because I dropped out of Davis. I was working for my dad, tried to make a deal with him. You know, that didn't work out. Started our own company in the Bay Area and had those relationships. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where we made much bigger profits, focused on that, the in, in park, uh, home sales. And then, um, and then, uh, through, uh, one of my relationships with, uh, with one of the guys that trained me on how sure. to sell homes, yeah. he connected me with a mobile home park broker that found us a deal up in, um, up in Orville. Okay. So it was a 40 space park, had some vacancy, needed some cleanup. So we go in there, clean it up. And, um, I'd wake up at like, you know, three o'clock in the morning, pick up my construction crew, drive from from the Bay Area, from uh, Redwood City, yeah, to Orville. Orville, and work there two days setting these homes up. But what I did was all those old homes I was taking and throwing away to get the okay. space. I took them up there, and then fixed them up, seller financed them. Uh, so you're taking them from the Bay Area up to <clears throat> Orville. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Yeah. And so I filled up the this standards are a little less in Orville. <laughs> they didn't care if there was they light bulbs. Yeah, they don't care. They don't light bulbs in Orville. We put really joking, nice light bulbs. Kids, yeah. Really nice candles. So. Yeah. Really, yeah. No, we did We we did a nice job on the homes. They were yeah. already good homes, but it wasn't the Bay Area product. Right. But the, the people that we bought the homes from, they took good care of them. A lot of them were in good shape, but we were tossing them. So we got really the homes for free. free. Yeah. Took them up there, mm -hmm. set them up, seller financed them, filled up the park in two years, and then refinanced it. So we actually bought that park for like three hundred thousand dollars, put sixty thousand dollars down, seller financing, got a new loan, new value of seven fifty, new loan of four fifty, pulled the money out and went and did another one. Right. And we just we just kind of did that model. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After um, I I so I eventually I moved up to to Reading. Okay. Met my wife. Uh, we moved up to Reading, and. I, we bought uh, another couple mobile home parks up there yeah. and we were renovating those parks at that time. Um, but I'll, I'll rewind a little bit when we're flipping homes in the Bay area, that's a big taxable event. So right. it's very yeah. capital intensive. Right. And, uh, there's really no tax protection on that type of, um, right. income. And, and what I found was on the mobile home parks, we had uh, a bunch of depreciation, which we can, you we'll know, talk get about into, next episode, yeah. 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 And, uh, but also when we refinanced, it wasn't a taxable event. So okay. we pulled all the money out through refi. So we were able to go take all that yeah. money, plug it into next, and the next deal. So we, we had a lot more money to kind of compound Yeah. and compounding when you're young. Yeah. It's, it's like, uh, um, you know, it's, 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 it's jet fuel. Right. Oh yeah, absolutely. So 
Um, so we're up in Reading, and I started having all these uh, brokers, real estate brokers, pitch me on other asset classes, mini storage, warehouse, yeah, apartments, and I'm you know mm -hmm. thinking right. I know yeah. something, and, and so I'm looking into all these different uh, investments, and so I started studying again. I started reading the um, uh, books about real estate investment trusts and the different real estate entrepreneurs that I thought uh, you know were badasses and. Yeah. Um, and they all focused years ago, there were diversified REITs right. and they did different stuff, but then that kind of went away and all the guys that focused just kind of kicked their butts. Right. Gotcha. So I looked at that and I said, okay, well, what's the right real Is that because you kind of get in an industry and you just kind of know all the players and you know, you're, you're the, you're the guy. And so everybody that has something for sale, they well, here's, come to you. here's why it, 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 people lump real estate together. Uh, oh, you're in real estate now. Nah. You got to think about it like like Warren Buffett thinks about it. You're buying a business, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what's the, what's that business? Well, office, the office business is different than the mobile home park business. Sure. Is right. different than the uh, RV park business. Is different than a hotel business. They're all different businesses. Right. The land is just extra. Right. You, like, don't even think about the value of the land. Okay. What's the business itself mm -hmm. worth today? And what, you know, if I make these five changes, what can I make it worth? in five years right mm -hmm. yeah um and if you have something that is more predictable you know yeah. like multifamily, where there's always kind of a need mm -hmm. then you can kind of you can map that out right so what i did was i took all the different uh gosh i was probably 24 24 25 years old i, I um, put this chart together that had all the different real estate asset classes and then it had the the four cycles cycles of the economy it had mm -hmm. recession recovery, expansion, mm -hmm. and hyper supply. Yeah. So, you know, I just checked off, well, which, which does really good in every single cycle in the economy yeah. and mobile home parks just stood out. Yeah. You know, things get bad. People move into mobile home parks, things get good. You know, people still need mobile right. home parks and rents mm -hmm. go up. So, yeah. um, so I, I was able to kind of use whatever discipline I had very little. Yeah. <laughs> and um, because I, you know, I like to buy stuff. I, I you know, I like to do yeah. new deals and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I, I just, I just kept coming back to focusing. So, and I've, I've done that several times in my career where right. I've started to look out right. at different opportunities. Yeah. And every time I do that, and I get a lot of pitched on a lot of stuff now that yeah. you know, now that I have the money to do these other things. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's so tough for me to, for me to, kind of go in that any right. any other direction. So instead, I ended up expanding our company in the last couple of years where now we're a national company from, okay. you know, all the way from Florida up to, up to, um, uh, Rhode Island. Gotcha. And, yeah. you know, with most of our properties in California. Yeah. So, um, just expanding on mobile home and RV parks and focusing on, on and that business. There. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Being strong just in that, in your niche and, you know, basically staying with what you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think anytime you ever learn anything, there's always a learning curve. And usually that learning curve either involves time or money or both when you're learning something new. I mean, just, that's just how it is. That's just life, I think. And you can read all the books and hire all the consultants you want, but there's, you're probably going to screw up some stuff at some point along the road. Where you've seen your niche, I mean, that's like, that's your thing. Yeah, I was thinking about your question on, um, on you know, what, what would I tell, like my, what would I tell my younger self? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and you hear people say that if I didn't do all the things I would have done, I wouldn't know what I know, and sure, it would have gone differently. But um, uh, it definitely could have been a lot easier. Sure. And and having the knowledge, you know, so um, you know, on like there, there's there's just such an easier way. If if you go looking for it, you'll find a much easier way than however you're doing it usually. Right. Sure. Absolutely. But do you think sometimes that going through and taking those bumps and bruises is really what makes the easier way possible? Because if because you now know that that was the easier way and you didn't try, it. does that kind of make it's sense? Thick, it's kind of, it's, it thickens your skin, it, yeah, and uh, and gives you that real life experience. I mean, yeah. there, there's a lot of guys in our business, uh, especially now and, and really in the last like maybe seven years, you've had all these uh, Goldman Sachs types that are going out raising funds, yeah. Um, you know, fifty million, hundred million dollar funds to go buy parks, but you know they don't know 
they, they don't know the, the heavy lifting part of it. Right. They don't know Absolutely. how to fill up a space or right. how to properly market to sell homes and, yeah. you know, all these different things that um, they know it's a good investment. Right. Yeah. And, and they can do the math. But Right. But that's not always the math that yeah, makes so, it work. So there's a, a big benefit to that. Well, I, I kind of want to tie this back kind of the education and college part of it is like, you know, sometimes you just have to learn by doing. And you can, you can go read, you could, you could literally go read books for the next 50 years on mobile home park investing. But if you never went out and did it and took a couple of lumps, you know, and, and hit, you know, you just wouldn't know, right? Because, you know, every deal is probably a little unique and a little different. There's one-offs and nuances you, know, you just kind of have to go do it at some point. Yeah. And that, and that's true. And, and, and every, uh, even every property that we buy, we look at it at, at, uh, it's a mobile home park, but it's a little bit different business. And right. how does this one run compared to the other? And what do we need to change? And Yeah kind of dial all that in right yeah i mean so it's just not it's not cookie cutter every time which is different from a you know a goldman sachs s type guy coming in and be like just looking at the numbers you know which is which you, is you also can't why we super, you we can't do, be putting super fancy mobile homes in oroville like it's and, just not gonna work you know, this year we're gonna do like 35 deals okay and for someone to do five deals a year that's pretty impressive yeah um but because we're able to do uh you know do, we can we can work on different types of properties where those type of guys, you know, the, the, um, Carlisle group, the, right. um, Blackstones, sure. Uh, and a lot of the big REITs, they, they have to buy properties that are in a specific box. They fit right. in that box. This right. is how they operate. Yeah. We can bring on a third party manager and right. Yeah. 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 Um, well, um, let's go ahead and hit, hit up the speed round. Yeah. I mean, we could well, probably well, talk hold, for an hour. Hold on. I, you know, cause I do want to tease, you know, next episode okay, a little yeah. bit. Cause, cause, now you you are offering like hey this isn't just you know this isn't just the the bovita uh, group we're now offering hey investors there's a very advantageous um, uh, offering here could you give us maybe just a small preview as to what we're going to talk about next and and why you're bringing you know investors who may be looking for some opportunity sorry <laughs> maybe looking for some opportunity um, you know a, a good a, a good tax strategy yeah well in you know, so we kept buying, and as we would refinance properties, we'd keep buying more. And mm -hmm. in uh, in two thousand seven, two thousand eight, we had some properties, but we didn't ha that we wanted to buy, but we didn't have a refi. Uh -huh. Okay. So that's when I learned about you know, oh, I how do I go raise money? Right. Um, and I started bringing in. Yeah, because nobody would loan you money probably then. Right? I didn't have any family that wanted to give me any money. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, or the banks weren't really loaning at that time either. I mean, they mm -hmm. had really crazy lending standards for a couple of years there. Yeah. Not just not to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. yeah. <laughs> so, um, so at the time, uh, I called up everyone I did business with on the, on the dealership side of the business. Mm -hmm. And I just said, Hey, I've got this park that I want to buy. Would you guys be interested in, in investing? And I found that so many people that I was already in business with were just were like looking for someone like me to go help them invest. And some of them already invested in mobile home parks. Okay. And yeah. some of the guys that they were invested uh, with had retired or passed away or whatever. So, yeah. they, so they didn't have any more opportunities. Right. Um, so we, that was like the first time we actually started um, raising outside money from investors. Yeah. And um, so we use that model and, I've always taken a hundred percent of my money and plugged it back into any deal. So any mm -hmm. refinances just kept plugging it, plugging it in. Yeah. So at the beginning of this year, we decided um, that there was going to be a, a, a lot of capital from refinances, uh, quarterly distributions that we need to place. Yeah. So uh, I, I made a big investment into building out our um, our acquisitions department. Okay. We uh, we put that team together. Uh, 2019 was the first year that we actually put together a fund. Okay. And um, the whole the whole idea was just to make it easy for both me to invest my money and our, our existing investors to continue to invest their right. money into one entity that just did the investment for all right. these deals that sure. we're doing. Yeah. Well, so since 2007, 2008, I was always telling investors about how great mobile, really anyone, because all mm -hmm. I ever wanted to talk about was mobile, mobile parks, just yeah. to ask my wife and kids. <laughs> they, they love it. Yeah. So... Uh, so I would um, always talk about how that specific asset class class was just a good investment. Yeah. What I found uh, this year is that more people are interested in the tax benefits. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the for for years, 
uh, you know, when we bought that first park, we, we typically took 75% of what we purchased these parks for. And uh, that, that is infrastructure yep. and infrastructure is depreciated in 15 years. Okay. So you have a bulk of what we're buying these properties mm -hmm. where you have 15 year depreciation and that would always protect our cash flow. And what would happen is as we would uh, drive the revenues up by increasing the value of the, of, of the park, mm -hmm. um, filling up spaces, passing through utilities, doing these type of things, and it would exceed that 15 year depreciation, uh, we would, you know, your returns would go from five, six percent up to 12, 13, 14 gotcha. percent. Yeah. And then, but then you'd refinance, boom, you get a new loan, which would lower your cash flow. So then now you're con protected again for that 15 years. So we yeah. just had all this money that was, that we could continue to compound. Yeah. Uh, rather than sending it off to the government. Mm -hmm. Right. So that was always great, but I never, I never really promoted that. I right. always yeah. promoted, I mean, it was a huge benefit for us. But I just said, look at the deal on mobile home parks is just, it's just a, you know, it's a stable yeah. multifamily, uh, predictable captive audience, right. these type yeah. of things. Yeah. So now uh, what happened in 2017 is you have uh, the tax laws changed mm -hmm. so that all 20 year or less depreciation, you can take in one you single year as bonus yeah. depreciation. Which is huge. Yeah. So now... I'm I'm t I'm talking to uh, investors and I, you know it's usually referrals and this, these type of things and and you know I'm talking to them about the parks and they just want to know about the depreciation. Yeah, that's all I care about. Yeah. They say, well, yeah. you know, yeah, it's you know, yeah, we're getting great returns. Yeah. Like, yeah, but talk about the taxes. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, which is a great position to be in because you don't have to sell. You don't have to sell return at that point, which is super awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we'll dive oh, in the next episode. We're going to dive into yeah. that a little bit more. Um, but you know how big how big has Boa Vida grown, and how did you come up with the name Boa Vida? Uh, it's kind of a two part question. So uh, my wife's from Brazil. Okay. Boa Vida means the good life. Okay. There you go. Um, we, when you're in Brazil, and you're barbecuing, mm -hmm. and um, you know my, my wife doesn't come. Way. Yeah, my wife doesn't uh, come from a, a you know kind of a really kind of a poor neighborhood, yeah. poor family, and um, just a, you know phenomenal people, and we'll be sitting around uh, barbecuing, having a good time. And everyone's happy, and the kids are running, and they would always say to me because you know, my uh, I'm so bad at the Portuguese language. They would just say, "The Boa Vida, the Boa Vida." Yeah. Look, at the Boa Vida. Yeah. You know, it's the good life. Right. Yeah. You know, it's not it's not the material things that you have. Right. It's none it's of that. Friends, family, food. So, yeah. So when I started uh, the Boa Vida group, um, and we have you know, uh, Boa Vida Communities runs the the mobile home parks and Boa Vida RV. Okay. Parks and Resorts is right. our RV division. Yeah, um, the, it, it was about rebuilding these communities. And if you mm -hmm. think about um, years ago when these parks were fir first built, mm -hmm. um, you, you can think about the people on the street and how, how neighbors are. I mean, now, mm -hmm. you know, do you guys even know your neighbors? I mean, most people, they don't yeah. take the time to know their neighbors. Right. But these are communities, and, and the whole idea is to go in there and uh, breathe some more life into it and, right. and you know, Make it, uh, make it a you know good, safe, clean, friendly community. Right, and that's what that's what Boa yeah. Vida stands for. Oh, if you awesome. go to the RV parks, you'll already kind of see that the high end RV parks and stuff like that. You know, there's uh, it's just these great Americans out there. Uh, they've all got their American flags yeah. and they're barbecuing and they're inviting people oh, and right. they're, I mean, you know. So how do we create that right. in in the community that 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 you know. If right. you think about yeah. where you guys live and where I live and, and you know, in, in the mobile home parks that we're buying, that's that's really if we can if we can help uh, push towards that, that's that's yeah. that's, that's cool. where we want to go. It's a way cooler story than uh, how we came up with the wealth preservation podcast. Yeah. So we may yeah. just rename this to the Boa Vita podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> way more interesting. Yeah. Um, um, well cool. I think we're gonna we're gonna jump into the speed round here real quick. We have some funny we have some funny questions for you that we like to do with all of our all of our guests as they come on and then um, We'll get ready to, to do episode number two here yeah. in a little bit. But okay. first so. one is uh, after Tesla revealed their Cybertruck, how motivated would you be if Elon Musk were to be like, I want to do a trailer park with you, but I'm designing it? I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, when I'm, when I'm driving my 1971 Chevelle yes. next to a Tesla, I like to wave and just let them know, don't worry about the fuel, buddy. 
I'm using it all. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for saving it. <laughs> Thank you for saving it. I'm going to pass on the yes. Yeah. I'll yeah. tell you what, uh, if you wanted a partner on building an RV park with a surf camp, with a, with a surf ramp, uh, a ranch, a surf ranch RV park. Now we're on to something. Out of, there right go. here in Sacramento. That's what we need to there do. There we go. Okay. Hey, if he wants yeah. to do it all solar, that's fine. It's fine. We'll but you fine. know, those yeah. surf ranches are popping up everywhere. Yeah. I'm thinking yeah. beautiful five-star RV park. Yeah. And uh, we can go right now while it's raining, get some waves. Yeah. That's what yeah. we need to do. There Absolutely. You know? okay. Get one of those artificial wave machines. So, Okay. If you give your, your 22-year-old self uh, one piece of advice, what would it be? Don't apply to Denny's. Don't apply. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought about that question. It's just, it's, it's tough. All right. Um, I, I, what would you tell your son or your daughter that are, uh, I would teach them, I, I would say find a good mentor. Yeah. A lot sooner than you did, <laughs> you know, and of better course, better than dad. No, and, and of yeah, course, don't be dad. completely useless. Yeah. Don't be, don't, don't be useless. Be, don't suck. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, 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 yeah. So for any of our listeners who either have kids in high school or college, uh, what is probably the biggest piece of advice you feel like kids are not getting as they're headed off into the college atmosphere? Mm. You know, I had, I had one of our, one of our investors actually, uh, his son uh, was going to uh, Cal Poly came and interned with me over the summer. Super sharp kid. Um, but Excel spreadsheets. I yeah. mean, if you it, it it if you're good with Excel, like if you're good with spreadsheets and and numbers, like everything's gonna really come together for you. Our audio guy Our, just smiled because yeah. he loves he, Excel a, spreadsheets. He's yeah. an IT guy. He just we've got, got all excited. We've camera. got a couple of wizards that work for us. <laughs> yeah, and you know, yeah. it's, it makes such a big difference. Right. So uh, yeah, there you go. If you want to be successful yeah. in life, learn Excel. There you go. That's yeah. your t- hot tip Boom. for the day from Eli. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, last one. The holidays are in full force. Any weird traditions or fun or funny traditions that your that the family has? No, we're going to Brazil this. Uh, That's a great tradition. Yeah, the yeah. weather's going to be great. Hopefully, we'll get some surfing in. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. But um, no, nothing. You don't do Elf on the Shelf or anything like that. No. Okay. There you go. What about Saunders' household? Uh, my kids are easy. Uh, we did we did Christmas decorating last night, so that was that was done. And uh, the advent calendar is a big thing. We read the advent story or part oh. of the, uh, for the next nice for the next forty days. So that's two, or sorry, forty days, twenty five days yeah. until Christmas. Well, I guess it's not twenty five anymore. I've been begging my wife to bring the. I want to carry this tradition on in our family, but uh, her family has a Norwegian background. And they used to dress her up as what I call Lady Nordica, which is just a white gown and a wreath on her head. And I'm like, could we and the the, the braids that curled up? Is that I'm like, could Warren we please do Lady Nordica this year? I want to introduce our son to Lady Nordica, but no luck. So, well, cool. Um, that's a good end of the episode right there. Eli, thank you so much for being here. Um, any kind of last thoughts or anything you want to kind of conclude with before we uh, we kick this off? Oh, it was a lot of fun. Look forward to uh, the next one. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Perfect. Uh, well, real quick, just a disclaimer, uh, nothing we say is tax, accounting, financial, uh, legal advice. Um, so don't take anything that we learned here and, and you know, try and try and apply it without seeking the, appro- you know, the appropriate um, counsel. So talk to your CPA first, talk to your attorney first, talk to your financial advisor, anything like that, please, before you make any decisions. But thanks for joining us on the Wealth Preservation Podcast. Um, you can check us out, wealthpreservationpodcast.com, or make sure you hit us up on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and these videos will also be on YouTube um, with some short clips. So please uh, enjoy watching those. Thanks, everybody. Eli, thanks for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.